today's class, we are going to reach the end of this story of four multiplication tables, um, figuring out which one of these four doesn't belong. Uh, so just as a refresher, uh, you had these four different structures that we looked at in the activity last week. Uh, each group put together a multiplication table for their structure. The first one uh, involves complex numbers with multiplication uh, being the operation in this particular structure. Um, the second one was matrices, these two by two matrices with matrix multiplication being the operation. The third example uh, was sets and the operation here being the symmetric difference of sets. Remember symmetric difference is the set of elements which are not shared, exactly those elements that are not shared uh, by two uh, sets. And then the uh, fourth example uh, pulls from the symmetries of a regular octagon. And so these were all structures that have four elements and a binary operation. You came up with a multiplication table for them. Uh, and the question that we need to answer today is which one of these four does not belong with the others? And more specifically, why? Uh, why does it not belong with the others? And maybe more importantly than that, why do the other three that do belong, uh, why are they in fact birds of a feather? Right, so what do the other three have in common that the fourth one does not? Uh, that's the big question of the day that you're going to pick apart. All right, so we just took a quick vote, which one of these doesn't belong. And here's where the votes shook out. So quite a bit of disagreement, actually. Um, so that's good. I like disagreement. I like cognitive dissonance, because that's where learning happens, right? Um, why don't we, just to kick off the discussion for today, I'm going to invite... Um, one person from each of these categories to kind of defend their, their answer here. So maybe start with the complex numbers. So if you said that complex numbers is the odd one out, uh, what's your argument for why that one? So one difference that you noticed about these tables uh, that points to the matrices as the possible culprit uh, is that here, the, the, the element that acted like the identity, and remember, what did acting like the identity mean? What is that? How do we actually tell from this table that this element D is acting like the identity? What does that, what does that mean? Yeah, when you multiply by this D, this D character, um, it leaves anything that it multiplies unchanged. So D multiplied by A gives you A. D multiplied by B gives you B, and so on. And so you saw this column and this row in that table that were identical to the list of the elements that they're multiplying by in the first place, A, B, C, D. And in the matrix table, that happened to be the fourth row and the fourth column. In the other three tables, it was the first row and the first column. So there is a potential argument for the matrices being the odd one out. Are there other arguments for why matrices are the one that doesn't belong? Or is that what everyone that said B was queuing in on? Uh, all right, so how about C? Uh, what makes the set symmetric difference the one that doesn't belong, Grace? So anything times itself, let me make sure I get this right. Anything times itself is the empty set. Yeah. Um, and then that's not the same for the others. OK. Are there other reasons why the set symmetric difference might be? I noticed that both the diagonals were the same element, which was, was an empty set, I guess. OK. So let me get these back up on the screen. So when you say both of the diagonals, so another difference you noticed was that um, there were two. All right, in the other examples, there is one diagonal full of elements that are equal. So r to the sixth, these ones in that example. The, uh, it looks like all the a's going down the diagonal over here. Um, but the table in the middle looks like it has two different diagonals uh, that all have the same elements on it. OK. So in this table, uh, there is a symmetry, uh, symmetry across this diagonal, right? That any element on one side of that diagonal, if you look on the opposite side of that diagonal, you get the same entry in the multiplication table. Um, is that true for these other structures? Well, uh, not quite, right? If I, if I were to draw the diagonal down the, the center here, well, so this one here and that one there are equal. This I right here lines up with that I over there. Um, we could do these matrices, we can check this over here, r squared, r squared. Um, here's an i in the same place that, uh, where is that other one? This would correspond to this i over there. So actually, I would say that all four of these tables have that property. How, what, let me just ask the question, 
All four of these tables are symmetric across the diagonal. Why? What property is that manifesting? It's one of those two. Right, a symmetric, a, a multiplication table that's symmetric across the diagonal uh, will happen any time we have a binary operation that has the commutative property. Because that is the difference in a multiplication table between A times B and B times A, right? Those are going to be found, respectively, on the Ath row and the Bth column versus the Bth row and the Ath column. And a binary operation in which those answers are always the same is said to have the commutative property. Because for that, x operate y is equal to y operate x for all x and y in the structure. So actually, all four of these tables do have that property. But that's an important property. It's one of those properties that we've been trying to hold very carefully in our hands uh, at the beginning of the semester. Because as we remember from matrices, matrix multiplication in general does not have the commutative property. These four matrices, on the other hand, seem to have the commutative property with one another. Right? Your job, as I say for the rest of, of today, is to suss out uh, an airtight answer to this question. Which one of these doesn't belong? And for right now, it seems like the choice is between choice B and choice C, right? The matrix multiplication example and the set symmetric difference example. Um, and so I have uh, sort of a worksheet for you to work on to, to do this. And the main goal of this worksheet is to figure out with your numbered groups, I'm going to have you rearrange into your numbered groups, um, figure out with your numbered groups what are the differences between these tables that matter and what are the differences between these tables that shouldn't matter? If we're thinking about abstract algebra, we're thinking about getting behind the specifics, the particulars, the fact that one of these is matrices and another one is sets, and one of them is multiplication, and the other one is a set operation, and all those things, all those differences are superficial differences. We want to understand what's underneath. Okay. So what differences matter? What differences shouldn't matter? Uh, and hopefully, by answering that question, you'll figure out which one of these doesn't belong with the other three. Um, and the basic idea is to discover similarity by giving the same elements the same names as one another. Uh, in our last activity, the first thing I asked you to do was to find one example of an element which behaves in the same way in all four structures. And you keyed in right away on that identity-like element, right? That each one of these had an identity-like element. It was one, the identity matrix, the empty set, and the I. Uh, and so the first job that you're going to do is to give all of those elements the same name. We're going to just call them E. Right? Same names should have same properties. And that's maybe like, that's abstract algebra in one sentence. Give things that have the same properties the same names. And let all the other superficial differences not matter. So if you name all the identity-like elements E, I also asked you to find another element that behaves in the same way in all four of these structures. Give all four of those elements the same name call it, I recommend y. Here. And so that makes the other elements x and z. See if you can figure out how the other elements correspond, one with another across these four structures, and you'll have your answer.